Now, these days, millions of dollars are spent on movie special effects, but it still can't guarantee a film's success at the box office. But that matters little to American film critic Tommy Edison, who pays attention to movies in a very different way because he also happens to be blind. He's in Australia as a guest of the Other Film Festival, which is a film festival celebrating disability, celebrating the lives and experiences of the disabled, and he joins us now. Tommy, good morning. Really nice to meet you, and good welcome to News Breakfast. Good morning. good morning. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, of course, every Everyone's a, a movie consumer, no matter the disability. So, so how did you turn your love of, of films and just uh, the life of, of an ordinary consumer into that of a critic? Right, so it was a thing that um, my friend Ben Churchill and I were talking about one night, and I was complaining about films where I can follow the whole thing and then the last few minutes all the resolution is done without words, right? It's all done with cinematography and music and stuff, and I'm going, but what happened to that guy? And what, You know, so I was like, what? you know what, this might be interesting to review films from the perspective of a blind person. And, I, you know, and that was the way it started, and we got real lucky. The first review that we did, Roger Ebert tweeted it, and he actually yes. tweeted right. the first couple of them. So, In fact, that's a really important part of your sess, is the support that Roger Ebert has given you. He's tweeted a number of your reviews early on. That, that gave you the bump, I guess, took you out of the, the category of what the heck, a blind guy going to movies to something <laughs> to something a lot more meaningful. Well, yeah, and I mean, listen, there's still people in the YouTube comments and stuff that, you know, always say, how can you review, review movies you can't even see? But, you know, I, what was it, 1928, they invented the talkie, so I think yep. I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah, that's right. Now, what, what makes a good, or I suppose, what makes a bad film for the visually impaired? Right, well, a bad film for, the, for uh, blind people, I think, is um, a film with a lot of that CGI stuff, right? It's, yeah. it's great to look at, it's a lot of fun to see, but I feel like when they do that stuff, they sort of, you know, give the writers a day off. Yeah, look, it's true. So in, in a sense, uh, going back to the talkies, as you were saying, hmm. the talkies would have been a very good time for visually impaired people as well. Yeah. Uh, radio theatre, a very good thing what for great, visually sure. impaired. Absolutely. It, but now we've moved into this highly, highly visual area. So is this an appeal for screenwriters mm. to lift up their game? Well, sure, why not? I mean, I, you know, I've seen some some CGI things that have just been awful, like the X-Men stuff and the Thor, right? Yep. I just don't, you know, these long fight scenes and nobody's speaking and I just, I'm bored. All right, but let me ask you this, I was a visually impaired person though, it must be still nonetheless a stunning experience to be in there with all that extraordinary sound quality we have now, that yeah. digital sound and all the developments we've made there. Well, that's exactly right. I love it because, I mean, like, I don't have the big surround sound, I only have stereo at home, but, you know, yeah. in the theatre there's speakers everywhere and, you know, when people really use that stuff, it's, it sounds so great. Great, you know, like there was a movie from a couple of years ago called The Grey, and yes. it, like it was all outside and rainy and stuff, and they it, they did such a nice job because it was raining all around you. You know, yes. it was <laughs> wonderful. The storm was all around you. So, do you not go to the movies? Do you see your f films at home? No, I go to the theater. Yeah, you know, yeah. I I watch some things like off Netflix at home and stuff, but you know, I like going to the theater for the big experience. And, and, and so. what's access like for for visually impaired people at the theater, though? Well, I, where I'm from, I mean, in my local cinema, there's there isn't much, you know, so it's it's, it's all, I just listen. I go to the movies just like anybody else. Yep. And when we're doing a review, I don't ask any questions because if I start asking questions, then it's you know it's Ben's sort of uh, take on the movie rather than mine. Yeah, so yeah. it sort of clouds my opinion. Okay, Tommy, what are some good blind films? What would you rank as you say top three? Blind I films? would. All right. So like Goodfellas, I love Goodfellas. I can't get enough of it. It's what, a why, great, why is that? Is it the swearing? When, oh, no, I mean that's you know, but it's just the acting, right? De Niro yeah. and Pesci and those guys are just awesome. They're mm. just it's so good, and the music and, and all the, the sound effects. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's and just, a lot of talk, a lot of talk, a talk, ton talk. of talk. Yep. Yeah. Clerks is another one like that, right? Tons of because Kevin yeah. Smith is a real script guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, here's like Hugo, you would think wouldn't really work for me. It's this giant 3D thing, but I loved Hugo. That was wonderful. And I, I thought it got robbed at the Academy Awards that year. Yeah, and you're a big fan of The Big Lebowski as well? Love The Big Lebowski. It's tremendous. Yep. Again, see, lots of talking. You don't really need to see much. Yeah. And that's my point. I think, you know, if you could, you know, take the, like, watch a movie on a broken television or just listen to the audio, you know, sighted people, you should be able to enjoy it that way too. So tell us about the response that you get from other visually impaired people on your website, which is blindfilmcritic.com. Yeah, you know, blind people are pretty cool about it. They're, they're interested. They're like, wow, good for you. You know, you're doing something. <laughs> I mean, I do all sorts of stuff in my life that people don't think I'm supposed to do. I mean, I spent a lot of my career as a traffic reporter on the radio. <laughs> I know, right? You know, and people think that's really strange. I, 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 take, I take Instagram pictures. I have like 31,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. So I do all these things that you wouldn't think a blind person would be able to do but I'm doing them. Yeah, it's and I, fantastic I, too. it's also it's, it's a good way, isn't it, of, um, of trying to turn on its head that assumption about visually impaired people. Well, that's exactly right. That's, and that's the fun of it, you know, and it's, 
like, you know, and I love answering questions. People have tons and tons of questions about my life and how it works and how we use technology and all sorts of things. Well, to some extent, though, do you have to, do you sometimes feel like, let's take the example of your traffic reporting, mm. do you have to rely too much on other people and, and other people being truthful to you? Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, doing the traffic, I, you know, I did it for a long time, so I built up a nice base of people that would call me any time they saw anything on the roads. And I knew that stuff was good. I could go right on the air with it. If I recognize the voice, i just, boom, right on the air. I don't care. <laughs> but, you know, some people, if there was somebody new and I never heard of them before, I'd check it out with cops first before I put it on the air. Yeah, good on you. So the same principle applies. You just check your facts. That's right. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> hey, um, tell me, I hope you have a good time while you're here in Australia for this film festival. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us today. Stay right where Thanks, you are Tom. and we'll um, get you out of the studio. Thank you. Tommy Edison there. And if you're interested, um, his website is blindfilmcritic.com. And that film festival is called The Other Film Festival. Yep. And it's returning in its sixth edition for five days of screenings uh, at the Melbourne um, Brain Centre in Parkville, which is a, a great idea. Speaking of films, uh, it was a very big day for the Australian film industry yesterday. Yes. It was the last recording of At The Movies. Margaret and David sat down for the last time to record their last ever episode, which goes to air on Tuesday next week, and there we see a photo at the, at the very end of it. Uh, a very, um, you know, a bittersweet moment for, for both of these figures. Oh, and also, more importantly, for the viewing audience, uh, we'll be devastated to lose. David and Margaret, no word yet on ABC Management whether this uh, idea will be resurrected in a different format, perhaps with Virginia and Michael presenting. Just <coughs> no word on that as yet. But, um, you know, I'm Say sure that that's... Say that again. Uh, yeah, Virginia v and Michael. It rolls off the tongue quite nicely, doesn't it? No, Michael and Virginia is better, actually. I, I mean, like, to be fair, Michael and Virginia sounds better. At the movies. Yeah. That's a, that's a great idea. There you go. We have a before and after pick, actually. Yes, that's yes a, you saw the, uh, this one, the latest one. Have a look at this one. Way back when, this was uh, oh. the happy couple. And, uh, and for, the, for the benefit of Tommy Edison, our blind film critic, who's still in the studio with us, the hair. Tommy, it's the issue is the hair. <laughs> We're looking at some serious 1980s hair there. Listen, I'm available if they need me. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stay here. Yeah. Hi, this You're guy. You're only human. Hi, this guy. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you like this uh, other news as well coming in overnight, Tommy. Uh, uh, Mick Jagger and right. Martin Scorsese are teaming up to uh, do a, a biopic on 1970s rock. Yeah. That will rock. So what it is, actually, it's actually not a biopic. It's actually going to be an HBO drama. Oh, it's a drama. Okay, yeah, about 1970s biopic. rock. There's a character who's sort of got a failing record label. It's the end of the big rock era, the beginning of punk, and he's trying to, you know, relaunch his, his record label and, and find his way through this new rock era. But it's all the excesses at that time. So, you know, not even having seen that, Tommy, how many stars would you give that? Well, it sounds like uh, four eyes open for me. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> My man, I'll pay that one. <laughs> Tommy's just going to stay with us for the rest yeah, of the show. Stay. I think. Yeah, sure, no, of course. Listen, I, I can know where to go. I'm in. Three, three on the couch, rather than two on the aisle, three on the couch. We have a really movie nice review idea. segment tomorrow. I should <laughs> come in for go. that too. I'll do it. Thanks very much, Tommy. <laughs>